Is AI stealing our jobs? That's a burning question. Ronnie, I'm a professional copywriter and I'm scared when I see what ChatGPT is capable of. Am I obsolete? And what about aspiring graphic designers with tools like Midjourney, DALL-E, or even Canva? Now, everybody can design like a pro. So should I even bother studying this stuff? Guys, I thought long and hard about all of this. And here is my epiphany. AI won't replace you. It's not gonna steal your job, but a person using AI will. What is up guys, Ronnie here. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is about getting you ready for the AI revolution because AI is here to stay and it's only getting better. That's a fact. So if we accept that, you really only have two choices. Number one, you continue to be scared or even worse than scared, angry. I've seen people in the comment sections of some of our videos literally being angry at what's going on with AI. And if that's you, completely fine by me. I respect your opinion. Continue to be scared, continue to be angry, and just sit by the side of the road and see the traffic moving. The second option is to embrace this technology shift and join the ranks of those who are building with AI, who use AI as their secret weapon to outrank their competitors, those who will keep or get the better jobs. You know what that reminds me? It reminds me of the emergence of the smartphone. It reminds me of certain people around me, I'm not going to say names, but who just didn't want to have a smartphone. They thought, oh, I don't need a smartphone. And then five, six years later, when everybody has a smartphone, they finally get a smartphone. And yeah, they're five, six years late to the game. That's exactly what's going on today with AI. All right, Ronnie, so how do I secure my job? Well, now that I got your attention, I believe that the best thing you could do is to learn how to master the art of prompting, aka prompt engineering. As we've mentioned in previous videos on this channel, better prompts equals better AI outcomes. So today we'll dive into three types of resources, free resources that will help you create better prompts. All right, so let's upgrade your prompt game and unleash the full potential of AI tools like ChatGPT, Midjourney, or Stable Diffusion. Let's go. All right, guys, we have a lot on our plate today. And before we get started, I want to start easy. All right. I want to start by a little definition of prompt. What is a prompt? Well, a prompt is basically the instruction we give to the AI for it to achieve a specific outcome. It is the description of a task that we want the AI to accomplish for us. It's basically the way we communicate with the machines so they do what we want them to do. And the term prompt engineering is basically referring to the art of prompting, the art of crafting better prompts that generates the better AI outcomes. All right, so now that we all understand the concept of prompting, let's see what these three different resources are. All right, so the first resource I would like to introduce to you is a category of website called prompt builders or prompt helpers or even prompt guides. All right, so let's see what these do. Some of you might wonder where I get all of these websites from. Well, basically, I follow people who know more than I do in the AI space. And one of the person I highly respect in this regard is Matt Wolf. We've already talked about Matt in the channel, and I use his website called Future Tools to find all of the tools that I'm going to be referring in this video. And also, everything that I talk about will be linked in the description of the video. So if you are looking for anything in particular, just refer to the description. So these prompt helpers or prompt builders, let me show you how I found them or how I discovered about these websites. Well, from the Future Tool homepage, you can basically filter all of the tools right here available on the website by categories. So make sure you tick prompt guides. Okay, prompt guides, and you should have a bunch of different results right here. So you can filter that by the most upvoted. That's usually how I like to search future tools, by the most upvoted, because I trust the community to let me know what they judge is the highest quality websites out there. So while preparing for this video, I've tested a bunch of these tools, and the one that I think was the most appropriate for me that I really want to share with you is prompt 
silo. So this one right here, it says a large database of mid-journey prompts. And I discovered it's more than just mid-journey prompts. So let's have a look at prompt silo and see how it works. All right, so this is what prompt silo looks like. It's not very graphical, it's kind of ugly, let's face it, but it is highly functional. It is highly useful as well in order to help us create better prompts. So from here, you can create different types of prompts for different types of tools, all right? So you see here kind of all of the different tools that it is compatible with. You have Stable Diffusion, Playground, Leonardo, Blue Willow, then you have your GPT, ChatGPT, etc, etc. So if you click on any of these, you will be redirected to basically these websites or these AI tools. So what I understood after using this tool for a couple of hours is that it's really convenient to generate two types of prompts to help you build better prompts for two types of of AI tools. The first category of tools is the image generation tools like Mid Journey or Stable Diffusion or text to image in Canva, which relies on Stable Diffusion. The second category of prompts it can really help you build is all of the prompts that have like a text outcome, all right? So like ChatGPT or Canva Magic Write or Jasper or all of these text generating AI tools, all right? So let's start with an image prompt and then we'll see how we can use this from silo for generating text prompts, better text prompts. So let's say we want to generate a hyper realistic photo of a subject. Okay, so that's the base of my prompt. So that's exactly what I'm going to type a hyper realistic photo of and then if you're kind of stuck, like you can use the first column right here to help you determine your subject. So you see you have nature, if you click on nature, you have all these keywords like Himalayas, bay, body of water, canyon, cliff, you have a bunch of different keywords that you might not have thought about that you could use to build a better prompt. Okay. So I don't really want like a nature kind of thing that you have trees and plants and flowers, a bunch of different kinds of trees and flowers, which could be very useful. You have metals, gemstone, fogs, fur and hairy. <laughs> So that could be interesting to kind of go together with the subject I have in mind. Okay, so what I had in mind here is pets. Okay, so I'm going to click on pet and you see the list is like the basic one is dog, a puppy, but then it goes like a little bit more in depth, like in detail, like a Belgian Malinois, a Bernese mountain dog, Collie, Corgi. Let's go for Corgi. So if I scroll back in, I can see that it has added the keyword Corgi in my prompt box right here. Okay, so a hyper-realistic photo of Corgi, let's say of a Corgi. All right, so I use one of these keywords. Maybe I could go to this one right here, fur and hair. I want to add more like a fuzzy Corgi. Let's go for a fuzzy and hairy. Okay, of a fuzzy and hairy Corgi, like so. All right, so that's the first column. So if I move over to the second column, I am now presented with a bunch of famous artists. So here you see a huge list of famous artists, painters, and basically people who create artwork, cartoon artists, comic artists, anime and manga artists, creepy artists, cubist artists, photorealism artists, maybe this. Okay, so if you choose, let's say, Oscar Okonu. I don't know him, but yeah, let's try this. So in the style of Oscar Okonu. All right, let's stick with our photorealism artist because that's exactly what I want, like a hyper-realistic photo. Then you have different art styles. Okay, so photographers, uh, you have all of your photographers right here. Not going to change that because I already have a reference artist, but just know that they exist. So basically, Prompt Silo is a gold mine of keywords that you can use for your prompts. Different kinds of keywords for your subject, for your artist reference, for your art style or art direction. And then you have the fourth column right here with options like lighting. Okay, so let's find something black and light bulb, bleach bypass, cinematic movie photograph. Yeah, let's go for cinematic movie photograph. And also let's choose a camera. 
Okay, I have access here to a bunch of different popular camera names. Okay, so I'm going to go for a Leica M6. And also, I can choose like the kind of lenses I want. Emotion and expression. Yeah, let's do this. Like amused, angry, annoyed. Uh, no, I want something cute, shy, tender. Let's go for tender. And yeah, that's pretty much what I'm going to go for. So now I have this prompt. A hyper-realistic photo of a fuzzy and hairy corgi probably need punctuation here in the style of oscar yukono cinematic movie photograph leica m6 standard okay so let's just copy this whole prompt and come to a canva document right here with text to image open and i'm just going to paste that prompt okay let's try this i think that's a lot of information already for text to image but let's see what comes out so there you go guys we have our corgi images i really like this one right here i'm gonna click on it make it bigger to kind of show you the result. Okay, so we have something slightly weird going on with the eyes, but I do have this furry vibe. The tender vibe is definitely there. Yeah, fuzzy and hairy or fuzzy and furry corgi. I think this was pretty good. All right, back to the silo. I want to show you something else. Okay, so that was for image prompts, but this website is also great for generating better chat GPT prompts or better Canva magic write prompts. All right, so how do you use it for text prompts? Well, you have this section right here. You have two, four, six different categories here that say chat GPT. All right, so you have chat GPT act as chat gpt writing styles famous copywriter style copywriting formulas keyword prompts and text tools okay so these will help you come up with better text prompts all right so let's see what they have under act as act as is a famous chat gpt prompt but maybe you don't know all of the capabilities like act as what well this will give you a bunch of keywords you can act as an academician an accountant advertiser so what else do we have like an english pronunciation helper maybe i should use that a life coach you have a bunch of different things you can act as a rapper i love that let's act as a rapper oh when I click on it, it gives me a very long prompt right here with some sort of weird word here. I want you to act as a rapper. You will come up with powerful and meaningful lyrics, beat and rhythm that can, ta -ta -ta, the audience, probably that can rock the audience. Your lyric should have an intriguing meaning and message which people can relate to. When it comes to choosing your beat, make sure it is catchy yet relevant to your words so that when combined, they make an explosion of sound every time. Every time. My first request is, I need a rap song about finding strength within yourself. Okay, interesting. I could probably do this. I will change that though. I need a rap song about buying a luxury car. Oh, without any money. Why not? All right, so I need a rap song. Uh, writing styles. Okay, abusive, academic, affirmative, amazed, angry, anxious, apologetic. All right, so what should we find here? Like motivational, let's say motivational, using a motivational writing style. Okay, and you know what? I also want to give it like a rapper kind of specific keyword, write the song in a 16 bar verse structure because that's the most popular kind of structure for a hip-hop song and do so in the style of i don't know redman for example all right i do have a prompt right here I have used two of the different chat GPT helpers right here, but you have other ones. So I encourage you to explore the other categories. Okay, right here. Now I have my prompt. I'm going to copy this and try to use this in Canvas Magic, right? So I'm here with my Corgi. I'm going to create a new page and I'm going to call the assistant right here and click on Canva Magic, right? Which is a pro feature, but free user will also have an opportunity to try this one for 25 prompts lifetime okay so if you haven't yet exhausted these 25 prompts you can still use this as a free canva user otherwise if you want to use that feature inside canva you'll have to be a pro user or this works very well with chat gpt as well or any ai tool that will generate text outputs all right so me i am a pro user here i'm going to use magic right okay so i'm going to paste all of that okay make sure it is properly written okay 
let's try this and see what it comes up with. All right, guys, I've made this a little bit more legible. Let's discover this rap song about buying a luxury car, but with no money. All right, I'm not gonna rap this, but I just want to read it to you guys. I'm dreaming of a luxury car, but my pockets are empty. I ain't got the cash, but my heart's filled with envy. I see my neighbors bawling in their ride with the top down. I need that kind of life, but how to get there, I don't know how. Okay, so maybe we need to stretch this so we have the full bars. The outro, I did it my way against all odds and doubts. I'm a boss, a winner, no need to shout. I'm cruising in my ride, enjoying the fruits of my labor. I'm living proof that with hard work, you can save it. That was a pretty cool rap. I don't know if this is still of Redman, probably too clean for Redman, but I think this is a pretty good rap. And here again, what's important is that I use prompt silo with the wrapper prompt for ChatGPT that kind of kickstart my prompt. And all I had to do is to maybe reference an artist, rapper or singer, and also insert the topic of my rap. And that's what I wanted to show you about the prompt silo. It's an amazing website, a great resource. I encourage you to check it out. Link will be in the description. Now let's move on to the second category of resources I have researched for you. I'm talking about the prompt libraries, aka the prompt repositories. So if I come back to Future Tools here, Matt's website, let me show you the ones that I have been testing and the one I have decided to showcase in this video. I've been trying ordinary prompts. My absolute favorite was this one right here, DataFit. So if you click on DataFit from uh, the website from Future Tools, you will land on this homepage right here, ChatGPT prompts community. Okay, so a lot of these prompt libraries are actually mentioned as or referred to as prompt communities. A lot of them will have a Discord attached to them so you can get in there and discuss different prompts. You can submit your prompts with the community and simply see the community upvote or downvote their favorite prompt. So that's something I really like. You can comment on the prompts. All you have to do is simply to create an account and just get started. So on these types of websites, what you will find is already made prompts for you. Unlike the first category where the website kind of helped you build your own prompts, this one has some prompts already baked for you. So you can just grab them and use them as such in the AI generative tools. So let's see what we have here, the way we can search for prompts, the way you can find prompts. So you can type for keywords, for example. So if you want something like, I don't know, a letter, you just type in letter and you have different things like newsletter, letter, random letters, cover letters. So that's one way you can do that. If you want something related to, I don't know, buyer persona. So you can type in buyer persona and you'll find prompts about buyer persona. So that's one way of searching. You can use the search bar. Another way of searching is to use the categories right here. You have email, marketing, writer, guide, code, IT, social media, expert, etc., etc., etc. And then the third way of using this site for finding prompts is to look at the right side column right here that says trending post. Okay, so I see the first one trending is better content outlines. So I click on that. Since it is trending, it must be a good prompt. I want to try this prompt. So the prompt goes like this. Please ignore all previous instructions. That's a classic way of starting a chat GPT prompt. Using the MIS framework, please create a detailed long form content outline for our English writers on the topic. Insert your topic. Also provide a short and attention grabbing title for the article and an estimate of the word count for each subheading. Include a list of semantically similar FAQs using the vector representation technique. So it kind of like gives you some framework to work within the MIS framework, the vector representation technique. So all of this is kind of like stuff I wouldn't have come up with. Do not remind me what I ask you for. Do not apologize. Do not self-reference. Okay, so let's try this prompt. I'm gonna copy the prompt. Okay, so there's a button here, copy. Okay, it is copied. And this time I will be using ChatGPT. So there you go. This is the default GPT 3.5. I could go GPT 4. Let's go GPT-4. I'm gonna paste the prompt. So please ignore all previous instructions. Kind of like to structure my prompt so I can see better. Okay, the topic is gonna to be something different. Like I have a topic here in mind. So 
let me paste it here. Topic is how to grow your YouTube channel to 1 million subscribers in a year. All right, let's try this. I'm just going to run the prompt like so and see what happens. So it starts writing, giving me the title, 1 million subscriber in a year, the ultimate YouTube growth blueprint. So it's starting to giving me the outline right here. The first part of it would be laying the foundation about roughly 800 words. So define your niche, identify your target audience, create a unique value proposition, develop a consistent branding strategy. And second, Second is your content strategy. Perform keyword research, craft engaging titles and thumbnails, etc. etc. So for being a YouTuber with the goal of reaching a million subscriber some point, probably not within the year, unless all of you guys watching subscribe to the channel right now and share it with at least 10 friends and ask them to subscribe, unless you won't be friend with them anymore. Maybe that could work but I, I'm not sure you will do it. So anyways, coming back to this, this is a pretty good outline and a pretty thoughtful strategy, I would say, for a YouTube strategy. Now, I could probably ask ChatGPT to elaborate on each of the points and really fill out these subheadings with a complete strategy. I'm not going to do that, but you could probably prompt something in the range of now for every one of these six points, please write a detailed copy of what the strategy would look like. And it probably is going to start writing you that detailed strategy. So I'm really happy about this better content outline prompt that I found on DataFit. So I just showed you the number one trending prompt right here, better content outline, but it's really up to you to search for something else. For example, social media. So what I would, the way I would recommend you to use this prompt library is to either search for keywords or use the categories and then right here you use that filter and you use the most voted you use that because this will show you the ones that have been the most upvoted okay so YouTube script and catchy title intro outro this is probably a good one 291 upvotes I would recommend you click on the ones that you find interesting the titles at least and you see what the prompt looks like you can learn a lot by analyzing already made prompts. So the art of prompting, which is what we are trying to develop, the skill we are trying to sharpen in this video, will come by using the AI tools regularly, by trying different types of prompts, by analyzing people who already achieve great results with AI tools and see what their prompts look like. And these prompt libraries are a really great place to start looking at other people's prompts. So that's what I did, that's what I encourage you to do to really be curious and really kind of be like an alchemist mixing stuff and yeah that's how you get the best results all right let's move on to another library i would like to quickly mention i'm not going to use it but i want to show you it exists and again the link will be in the description this one is called prompt vine okay discover the collection of best chat gpt prompts products and resources so this is how it looks the reason why I show you this one is because I like how it is organized. So if you scroll down a bit, you will see different categories. Prompt for education and tutoring, prompt for entertainment, prompt for problem solving. And then you can view all of the prompts by categories, see? And the interface is kind of clean looking, like you have the little emojis for illustration. And then you can also sort the prompts by professions. And that's really interesting. So for educators, game developers, journalists, magicians, coaches, motivational speakers, etc., etc. So I found that semantics, that organization really interesting. I would say it's more user friendly than DataFit that I just showed you earlier because first it looks better and second it is better organized. Now in terms of the quality of the prompts I don't think it differs very much from the other ones because you will find kind of the same prompts on all of these libraries but yeah I'm sure you can find some gems on this one as well so just start digging around. Now there is a last website I want to show you in this category of the prompt libraries but this time let's switch over the image generation tools okay so what if we want to find some already made prompts for tools like Midjourney, for example, or Stable Diffusion, which is the technology Canva relies on. Well, I have a library of prompts for that too. And this one is called Lexica. Lexica is the Stable Diffusion search engine. So you will find a bunch of images. And for each of the images, you can grab the exact prompt that has been used to generate these images. Now, I have already mentioned Lexica in a previous tutorial I shot, my ultimate prompt 
guide for text to image canvas ai image generation tool i will have a link in the end screen of this video linking to that other tutorial so you can watch it next if you want to but yeah, Lexica is kind of the same thing as PromptVine or DataFit, but for images. So you can either start by scrolling down, okay, so until you find an image that you like. Let's see, this one, not bad. So this is a Portra 400 high DPI film scan of a NASA astronaut wearing a spacesuit on a planet made of uranium. Okay, let's try this. You could copy the prompt like so and just paste that in mid journey or in this case probably better to use it with stable diffusion or directly into text to image in canva so there we go we have our nasa astronauts we have this lady astronaut right here i'm not sure if she's on a planet made of uranium she kind of have, has like weird teeth though but we should not make fun of her teeth that's a problem with ai like the teeth the fingers it's getting better but still and we have this one right here it's not bad I mean, we do have something. This one is not the highest resolution. So I'm coming back to this prompt because I was not so satisfied and I'm trying to understand why. Okay, so your prompting journey it's not going to be a straight line. Sometimes you're going to fail and generate some images with like crooked teeth or just seven fingers. All right. So that will happen. And I decided to keep my failure to generate this astronaut to show you what to do if this happens. So what to do is to come back to your prompt because it's all about the prompt. It's always about the prompt. So what's going on here? A Portra 400 high DPI film scan of a NASA astronaut wearing a space suit. So you know what? I'm gonna get rid of all the fluff at the beginning and just keep a NASA astronaut wearing a space suit on a planet made of uranium. Okay, I'm gonna copy the prompt again, come back to Canva and try again. But this time, I'm gonna cut the fluff. Okay, a NASA astronaut wearing a spacesuit on a planet made of uranium. Let's try again and see if by simplifying the prompt, I could get better result. It seems like it's already a bit better. This is not perfect, but this one is not too shabby. Let's see. Let's wait for it to finish loading and I'm gonna scale it up to see if I could use that. So this is not too bad. This one, like this astronaut is actually more awesome, but the planet is not really as cool as this planet right here. So already I would say I've had better results with my prompt because I made it more simple. So lessons here is, yeah, it's not always gonna be top notch, okay? You'll have to try different things and see what works for you. All right, I think I spent enough time here. What's important to remember is that there are libraries out there that will help you figure out the prompts okay so your job is to discover them is to spend time with them is to open these prompts try them out tweak them and really start developing a feel with this prompt of what works what doesn't work in the different generative ai tools All right, guys, I have one more resource I absolutely want to share with you because this one has helped so many people become better at prompting. I'm talking about an open source prompt engineering course. It's called learnprompting.org. This is what it looks like, and it's completely free. So if you explore this landing page, it says a free open source course on communicating with artificial intelligence. Okay. So this is what it looks like. You have a couple of YouTube videos right here. If you click on start learning, then you basically you start the course. It's a text based course. So there's no videos in the course, but you have the entire table of content right here. It's quite pleasant to go through. It's well written. It's fun to progress along this course. So I really encourage you to have a look, see if this is for you. You will learn about the basics. You see introduction, prompting, giving instructions, role prompting, few shots prompting, not all basics stuff I would say about prompting. Then it goes to basic applications with a lot of examples, what you can do, writing email, finding emojis, contracts, uh, different things you can do with AI once you know how to communicate with it. Then you have like uh, you progress through the course and you have your intermediate level 
with some more elaborated type of prompts like the chain of thought prompts, like the zero shot chain of thought prompts. All of these techniques and way of prompting are explained in here. And you can really, as you progress through the course, start better understanding. You will be trying a bunch of different prompts, but also become more savvy about different techniques to prompt AI tools. So I've gone through a good portion of this course. I haven't yet finished it, but it's a really well-made course. I learned a lot with this course. So yeah, it's right there. There'll be a link in the description as well. I encourage you to follow it. It's completely free and yeah, it gives you also some nice tools and resourcing and references if you want to dig deeper, if you want to dive deeper into the rabbit hole. All right, a few things before I wrap up this video. Well, first and foremost, I would appreciate a good old like if you are still with me at this stage, meaning you probably think this content has been valuable for you. Second, don't forget to check out all of the links in the description below, all right? And also, I would love to hear your thoughts. How about we use the thread of comments under this video to create our very own Rondi prompt library? So if everybody kind of pastes his or her favorite prompt, be it for me, journey for text to image for magic write or chat gpt just mention like what is the tool and then paste your prompt in the comment section and then like so we can come back to this video and use other people's prompts probably not the best way of doing it but i'd love to see some engagement on this video it is about prompts so let's make it about prompts all right that's pretty much what i wanted to say in this video this is kind of like the beginner level i'm planning on creating a follow-up video with the next level and in that next level, I'm going to be talking about the AI gurus, all right, the AI whisperers, the people that I follow to learn about all this stuff. And I'm going to make a video about that. And if you don't want to miss it, the best thing you can do is subscribe to the channel right now. All right. End of the tutorial. As promised, guys, I'm going to leave you with my ultimate prompt guide for text to image. The video I mentioned earlier in the video is right here. So you can watch this next.